a professor of paleontology at the University of Bristol. Uh, and this means I have to do three different things, which are teaching, of course, teaching undergraduates and uh, postgraduates. Uh, doing research is the second main thing, and that means essentially finding out new stuff uh, and trying to convince the rest of the world that this new stuff is right. Uh, and the third part would be management, I suppose you could call it, which is running a research group, managing large numbers of students, uh, encouraging, enthusing, mentoring, all the other things you, you, you hope to pass on. Because I think it's a, it gives you an opportunity to uh, be a kind of detective. You, you, you may be puzzled by questions, you may query what people say, uh, and this gives you license, or indeed you're expected to, follow your nose and, and try to find out answers to uh, questions about the way the world works. So that's why I wanted to do it. It's a sort of childish curiosity that you carry on um, all through your life. I was always excited about science from a very young age, but I decided I would become a paleontologist very early. Um, at about the age of seven, I got a kid's book about dinosaurs, like so many people do. Uh, and I decided then that's, that was for me, uh, and I stuck with it. Uh, and, but I did realise that this required quite a lot of hard work, so that anybody else planning that uh, would need to realise this is quite competitive, so you have to work hard at school, work hard at university, and all the rest. Part of my job is the discovery, finding things, um, and sometimes getting it right, although very often getting it wrong. But um, being able to plan, having that freedom, being your own boss, I think this is something which attracts a lot of people to be academics, whether in a university or museum. And practically speaking, of course, part of that is, is another fun part of the job, which is you don't do it all yourself. Uh, as you get older, like me, you get to take on uh, lots of young research students and um, hope to train them so they can develop their careers, but it means that um, you're working as a team. Uh, and that's a great part. You're not a solitary individual. So we discuss all the time, what are we going to do? What are we going to, where are we going to go? Um, and I'm looking forward later this month uh, with one of my new students. We'll be off to China uh, doing some field work there. So uh, the, the fun never ends. The least fun part is the paperwork. We just have an awful lot of tedious stuff to do from time to time. But luckily, unlike in some jobs, we can keep that to a minimum. I think the most important skill for a scientist is curiosity. Um, that desire to find out new things, it, it requires you to be a little sceptical. You, you, you read things, um, you have to accept most things you read, of course, but from time to time you'll ask a question, well, are we sure? Do we really know that? And in the case of dinosaurs, we have those questions like, what colour were they, why did they die out, all the classic things. And we don't solve those just by arguing. You actually have to find evidence and, and convince people. So the curiosity, and then I think that links through to a, a sort of doggedness or, or dedication that once you've thought, all right, we don't really know that, what do we need to do to find out the answer? Then you have to be fairly dogged or determined because sometimes finding the answer, getting to the place where the answer lies, uh, achieving the correct analyses will be very costly and you have to push uh, and convince people that this is worth doing, that you can raise the funding, uh, that you can engage other people to help if they're needed. <laughs>